deeply saddened, more deaths confirmed at an aged care facility in Western Sydney. Residents' families tonight concerned about their loved ones. Also, a country falls silent to remember the workers who have lost their lives serving on the coronavirus front line. Could the deferred Olympic Games be cancelled? Japan's medical association weighs in. And it's been targeted for spreading infectious diseases. So are we bidding farewell to the handshake forever? This is SBS World News with Catalina Flores. Good evening. As more communities around the world get their first taste of reduced restrictions or prepare for the easing of some measures, World Health officials are warning the crisis is far from over. At home, New South Wales has become the latest state to announce tentative steps to ease restrictions. It joins Queensland and Western Australia, but Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews is holding firm. An estimated 400,000 New Zealanders have today returned to work. Globally, there are more than 3 million cases and 211,000 deaths. Australia makes up 88 of those fatalities. With more than 6,700 infected since the start of the outbreak, there are currently 1,015 active cases. And of the half a million tests conducted around the country, less than 1.5% have come back positive. More from overseas shortly, but we start at home. And concerned family members have gathered outside the Newmarch House in Western Sydney earlier tonight. It follows news that five residents have died after becoming ill with coronavirus, bringing the total number of fatalities at the centre to 11. As news broke late today of more deaths at Newmarch House in Sydney's west, concerned relatives of residents gathered outside the aged care home, anxious about the safety of their own loved ones. Previously, if someone passed, they'd know. But now it's, it's a secret society. They're making their own laws, their own rules. Five COVID-19-related fatalities have been reported in the past 24 hours, bringing the total number of deaths linked to the facility to 11. It makes you scared. I think it's going to be our loved ones tomorrow or the next day. In a statement today, Anglicare said it was deeply saddened by the deaths. This is a tragic time, not only for the families who have lost their loved ones, but for other residents and families. It is also taking a deep toll on our staff. The virus was first discovered there on April 11, and Anglicare says it will be some weeks before the facility is cleared of the virus. From Friday in New South Wales, two adults will be able to visit anyone else in their home as long as they are healthy and social distancing measures are adhered to. But this first loosening of social restrictions came with a warning. If you have a sniffle, you shouldn't be visiting anybody. You shouldn't be out of your house, frankly. You should be getting tested. So we want to stress uh, that these, these uh, opportunities to visit others in a household come with qualifications. Queensland today reported what it's calling a zero day, with no new infections reported. And while New South Wales followed Queensland and WA in announcing various easing of restrictions, Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews has steadfastly refused to join them. This is not over and any sense of complacency would simply be wrong. It would run the risk of giving back all the great gains that we've made. A huge number of Victoria's construction workers were tested on site today, part of a testing blitz aiming to reach 100,000 people in the next fortnight. The spread of the virus from unknown sources has reduced dramatically. Only one of today's confirmed cases was via community transmission. A statistic Health Minister Greg Hunt says is one of the most important he's seen in his time dealing with COVID-19. It means that as a country, we are not just flattening the curve, but we are consolidating it, extending it and securing it. Jason O'Brien describes himself as a miracle man. Mr O'Brien from the western New South Wales town of Dubbo has survived COVID-19. I'm just grateful that these people here, my blue angels and the doctors, they, may, they put my life back. Give me my life back. As he headed home, he was given a departure to remember. <laughs> Matt Canellan, SBS World News. A minute's silence has been held across the United Kingdom. 
for frontline workers who've died during the coronavirus pandemic. NHS staff stood still outside hospitals remembering more than 100 medical staff and other key workers who lost their lives while carrying out vital duties. Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who's recovered from the virus, and members of his cabinet joined in the tribute along with the leader of the opposition. There have been more than 21,000 COVID-19 deaths in the UK and over 158,000 cases. Several weeks into a strict lockdown and Russia has had its highest daily rise in new coronavirus cases. More than 6,400 have been confirmed, bringing the total to over 93,500. Almost 900 people have died. A military plane carrying medical supplies and protective equipment from Turkey is tonight on its way to the United States. The delivery includes 500,000 surgical masks and disinfectant. The aid comes at a pivotal time in relations between the two countries, which have been strained by disputes over Iran sanctions and Syria policy. The World Health Organization has warned the coronavirus pandemic is far from over. The agency is particularly concerned about rising infections in Africa, Eastern Europe, Latin America and parts of Asia. It's calling for nations to stand united in order to defeat the disease. This virus will not be defeated if we are not united. If we are not united, the virus will exploit the cracks between us. While there are over 3 million reported cases of COVID-19 worldwide, the actual number of infections is thought to be much higher. For a month, New Zealanders have endured some of the toughest lockdown restrictions in the world. The nation was effectively closed, but today the Level 4 lockdown was reduced to Level 3 and an estimated 400,000 New Zealanders returned to work. Two cases of COVID-19 were confirmed overnight and experts warn the virus has yet to be eliminated. That first sip of store-bought coffee after almost five weeks in isolation. Oh, amazing. It's never tasted better. So stoked. <laughs> Honestly, so, it's so, so good to have a coffee. Like the a first coffee. real coffee. Traffic jams at takeaway stores as New Zealanders celebrate the work they have all done to flatten the curve. The number of cars on the road, a sign the economy is on the move again. Every day that there's zero dollars going into the bank account is uh, concerning, as you can imagine. But it's nice to see our customers again, even if it is through a Perspex screen. At Level 3, around 75% of the economy is operating with key sectors like building and construction, forestry, manufacturing and contactless retail starting back up. The Level 3 restrictions are similar to what we have now in Australia. People are encouraged to work from home if they can and schools will open tomorrow, but only for students who cannot study at home. 1,000 road and rail workers are back on the job, but gyms, cinemas and public places remain closed. Johnston and Liana. Retail purchases must be contactless. Customers cannot enter to non-essential stores regardless of their size. New Zealand is also not allowed to get a haircut yet. We will have to keep stamping COVID out until there is a vaccine. We are not done. Uh, but you can see that we have managed successfully under lockdown uh, to end community transmission. We need to keep doing that as we go. The total number of confirmed cases in New Zealand is 1,124. In Australia, it's 6,727. But Australia's population is five times larger. On average, New Zealand has 23 cases per 100,000 people. In Australia, it's 27 cases per 100,000. A similar result despite New Zealand's much stricter lockdown. But the real payoff for Kiwis could be a return to near normality in just a few weeks if the virus is wiped out. Professor Sean Hendy is a physicist who's been working on the government's modelling. Best case scenario, in about a month, we are absolutely sure we've eliminated it. Worst case scenario, we probably see numbers starting to creep up again um, in about a month. That'll tell us that level three probably wasn't that effective and we did have some undetected trains of transmission. The measures will be reviewed in two weeks and if there's no rising cases, the government has flagged restrictions on gatherings could ease.
But for now, even a little bit of freedom is a welcome relief. Lucy Murray, SBS World News. Well, coming up, checking in on a friend. What does Donald Trump know about the health of Kim Jong-un? You're going on the charcoal diet. Delicious. <laughs> From paleo to vegan. Nothing to lose but weight. Low carb to fasting. Ah. The diet we've chosen for you is the McDonald's diet. <laughs> Is this real? Join a team of experts as they separate the nutrition from the nonsense. I'm feeling irritated with all of it. Give me some carbs! How to Lose Weight Well starts Monday 9.40 on SBS and On Demand. How are you all coping? It's a little crazy. Working from home and homeschooling. It is challenging to do both. How Aussies are making it work. We will become better and better at this. Half a million people visit Machu Picchu every year. Not anymore. The coronavirus lockout is crippling communities who depend on tourism. I am worried about how this will end. Now streaming on SBS On Demand. The COVID-19 crisis brings unprecedented internet traffic over the NBN network. To help support Australia during this time, we currently offer internet providers up to 40% increased network capacity. Our technicians remain on the ground wherever they're needed. And we're sharing updated tips to help you get more from your home setup. To find out more, visit nbn.com.au forward slash response. When you choose a bed from AH Beard, rest easy knowing it's made for you. We're an Australian company family owned for five generations, creating some of the best mattresses in the world. Combining traditional handmade craftsmanship with technological innovation, shaping a bed so comfortable and supportive, you'll feel our care deep down every time you sleep. Handcrafted in Australia by AH Beard. Available at Harvey Norman. HCF, Australia's largest not-for-profit health fund, has put the care of our members first for nearly 90 years. That's why we'll pay premiums for eligible members for up to six months if you're made redundant or stood down. HCF, that's uncommon care. If you're a small business, you've probably got a lot of questions right now, which is why you should speak to a professional accountant who's trained in planning and cash flow management strategies. For further support, contact a professional accountant today. Prince Philip and I are delighted to welcome you to Windsor Castle. Come behind closed doors. The Queen is big on shints. She's never seen a pattern that she doesn't want to put next to another pattern. For the scoop on royal life. Prince Charles, when he comes to stay, he often brings his own food. It's believed to have cost 4.5 million to renovate this apartment. It's a fairy tale. Royal Secrets starts Monday 7.30 on SBS and On Demand. Informazioni sul coronavirus nella tua lingua. Informati, proteggiti e salva altre vite. sbs.com.au barra coronavirus. Words are being hurled across either side of the Pacific, with China tonight hitting back at the United States, accusing it of lying in order to deflect attention from what it says is an insufficient response to the coronavirus. Earlier, President Donald Trump had accused Beijing of failing to stop the global spread of infection. The US president insists he was being sarcastic when he suggested scientists explore the injection of disinfectants as a potential cure for COVID-19. But that's not how a number of Americans understood it, with poison hotlines seeing a rise in calls. They've seen a spike in people using disinfectant after your comments last week. I know you said they were sarcastic. I, I can't but imagine why. I can't imagine why, yeah. Take any responsibility no, I don't. No, I can't imagine. President Trump refusing to take blame as he vowed to make China accountable, pledging an investigation into its handling of the outbreak. We are not happy with China. We are not happy with that whole situation because we believe it could have been stopped at the source. It could have been stopped quickly. The rhetoric met with action, tightening laws around tech exports to China. 
U.S. firms will now need licenses to sell equipment to Chinese companies which support the military. Beijing has hit back, accusing Washington of deflecting. I would like to stress that the U.S. politicians are ignoring the facts and lying repeatedly, with the sole purpose of deflecting attention and responsibility for the insufficient response to the epidemic prevention and control at home. In recent weeks, China has embraced a conspiracy theory emanating from the United States, which falsely blames a U.S. Army reservist for taking the virus from America to Wuhan. <laughs> As relations between the countries deteriorates, the US Secretary of State has accused China of exploiting the virus to further its global ambitions, citing what he called proactive behaviour in disrupted territories in the South China Sea, whilst hiding intelligence related to its response to the pandemic. China caused an enormous amount of pain, loss of life, and now a huge challenge for the global economy and the American economy as well. Chinese state media slamming Pompeo as an enemy of world peace. Abby O'Brien, SBS World News. And the US president has also weighed in on the health of Kim Jong-un. Speculation over whether the North Korean leader is gravely ill has grown in the past few days. It's the unlikely friendship that made history. America's commander-in-chief embracing the leader of the reclusive North Korea. With questions over Kim Jong-un's health, this bond has raised others. What does Donald Trump know? Uh, I can't tell you uh, exactly. Yes, I do have a very good idea, but I can't talk about it now. Rumours of a botched heart surgery have been gaining ground. I hope he's uh, fine. I do know how he's doing. Relatively speaking, uh, we will uh, see you'll probably be hearing in the not-too-distant future. The 36-year-old hasn't been seen in two weeks. Two years on from a historic reunification summit between North and South Korea, those overseeing the relationship from Seoul speculate that he could be avoiding gatherings in the pandemic. There have been 19 and 21-day periods where he wasn't seen, so this is usual. Inside North Korea, life appears as normal. The silence on its leader only broken by this update from the state broadcaster. But it didn't mention his health or whereabouts. The mystery remains, with the state's mouthpiece and friend tight-lipped on detail. Camille Bianchi, SBS World News. Well, health officials in Japan say that for the Tokyo Olympic Games to go ahead next year, there needs to be a significant breakthrough on a coronavirus vaccine. Japan currently remains under a month-long state of emergency due to a spike in cases. The president of Japan's medical association says the Games cannot go ahead until infections are globally under control. <laughs> In my view, it would be difficult to hold the Olympics unless effective vaccines are developed. I'm not saying it should not be held, but my prediction is that it will be difficult. There are reports that head of the Tokyo 2020 organising committee, Yoshida Mori, has indicated no further postponement is possible if the Games don't take place next year. New research has shown as many as half of all students will suffer significant learning setbacks because of the shift to remote learning. While some private schools are bringing all their final year students back to school full time, those still learning mostly online say the system is unfair. Final year exams are daunting for many and Year 12 public school student Ava Vospers now has an added fear. Especially with the private schools getting to go back full time and public schools still being kind of up in the air, not being able to ask questions, not knowing that I'm definitely understanding the content the same way, it's definitely a struggle in that sense and I am very worried about my future. New South Wales is taking a five-stage approach to bringing students back to the classroom. From mid-May, while public school students will build up from one day per week, some private schools will restart full-time, effectively giving students at private schools up to twice as much classroom learning across Term 2. 
The disparity causing students and parents to call for those in their final years of secondary study to be prioritised for an earlier return. I do hope that we do get an equal chance like the private schools will. We're very hopeful that the first few weeks of school returning will result uh, in us being able to possibly truncate the process, to have full-time student attendance face-to-face -face quicker than we anticipated. But there are concerns schools are simply not ready for a full-scale return. Some teachers and students are worried about the risk of transmission of COVID-19, despite research released over the weekend, which says children are unlikely to transmit the virus. We have a significant number of staff across the state who are either aged or who have underlying health conditions, which mean that they really need to be working from home to, you know, to protect their own health and safety at this stage. New research released today backed the push to reopen schools for all students as soon as possible. The report found the effects of remote learning are already being felt by the most vulnerable, including students who are already disengaged or from non-English speaking backgrounds. The new research tells us what we already knew, that disadvantaged students are especially affected by the school closures. And if we can get schools back to normal, the people who will be helped most by that are, are disadvantaged families. Piling pressure on states and territories such as Victoria, the ACT and Tasmania, which have opted for remote learning to get students back into classrooms soon. Lynn Evelyn, SBS World News. Tomorrow marks the 250th anniversary since Lieutenant James Cook sailed into Botany Bay and became the first European to set foot on Australia's east coast. While the 29th of April is a significant date in Australian history, it's likely to pass with little fanfare or celebration. Bruce Howell and Pauline Kirby are students of Australian history. Their passion revolves around the events that led to and followed the arrival of Lieutenant James Cook in 1770. He's a man of his time, a man of the Enlightenment of the 18th century. The potential is for it to be a uniting occasion. Both have contrasting views on the significance of Cook's eight-day stay and the first contact with the First Peoples. This was the first time on the East Coast, as far as we know, that Gwigal people at Kame Botany Bay saw white people and they thought they were ghosts. For more than two centuries, Cook was seen as a founding father, the first to explore, discover and chart the entire Australian East Coastline. The land was named New Holland. He stumbled onto a new frontier for the British Empire and one that ultimately led to Captain Arthur Phillips' first fleet and arrival 18 years later. But according to sections of the Aboriginal community, Cook is no hero. When the first fleet arrived and, you know, the diseases, the massacres. It was here in Kurnell when Cook made landfall for the very first time. It was a Sunday on the 29th of April, 250 years ago. And according to his journals, Cook also made contact with the Indigenous people for the very first time. There was an exchange, but there were no deaths. One of the men threw a spear. Uh, Cook fired another musket. And then either one or both of the men ran off to get a shield to, to protect themselves from the pellets. These days, Kame Botany Bay serves as an active port for Sydney. The federal government's multi-million dollar plans to reenact Cook's voyage has collapsed because of the COVID-19 outbreak. A lost opportunity for one local council. Extremely disappointed. Something that I was myself and I know the council is. And um, our council was really looking forward to it. It was, gonna, it was something that would have put Colonel and the Shire on the map. And so it was. The first cautious moments of our history. Unlike the huge bicentennial celebrations of Cook's Landing, which sparked a royal visit in 1970, April 29 this year will come and go without even a flutter. How are we going to ever, ever gain reconciliation in this country if we don't at least start somewhere and tell the story factually and honestly? Mike Tomolaris, SBS World News. Well, it's the greeting that's been halted, even banned during the current pandemic. The handshake has been under attack for exchanging infectious microorganisms, leaving the question, will it survive post-coronavirus? The humble handshake began centuries ago as a symbol of peace. Over time, it's become integral to almost every aspect of life. Strong hands. <laughs> 
They can range from the polite to the extravagant and the awkward, but also a show of dominance. Who can forget this infamous exchange between Mark Latham and John Howard on the eve of the 2004 election? It's seen as a manly thing. It becomes a kind of test of virility. But COVID-19 has brought a swift end to the lifelong habit. Far from friendly, it's become a deadly form of transmission. One of the problems with handshake, everybody is basically handing you potentially infectious microorganisms. Although it took some leaders time to get used to the change. I was at a hospital the other night where I think there were, a few, there were actually a few coronavirus uh, patients and I shook hands with everybody. The question now is what will replace the handshake. Really the heart of it is not necessarily what we do, whether we bump fists or shake hands or pat each other on the back or whatever it is. Uh, the, really, the thing that matters the most is the shared meaning. Oh, sorry, the back in there. Sorry, sorry. They, they... Coronavirus creating new social etiquette. Coming up, the weather and landmarks may be quiet, but how they're illuminating brightly amid the silence of this year's Ramadan. Captured Christmas Day, I didn't know that. World War II changed millions of lives forever. Why didn't I know this? Join four Hollywood stars as they uncover their grandparents' war stories. Oh, me, grandmothers. So how do you get through that? It's quite a lot to take on board, really. How oh, extraordinary, I never knew. I'm learning so much that yeah, I have yeah, no yeah. idea about. My Grandparents' War starts tomorrow, 8.30, on SBS and On Demand. Are you Catherine Harlow? I was, but that was a long time ago. Why are you here? Just come back for revenge. Cause baby, I know you know. I'm the one for you, baby. She the past doesn't ever stop. What do you plan to do? What's necessary? Reprisal tomorrow, 9.30 on SBS and On Demand. To keep us all safe and to help our health workers, it's vital to know quickly if you've come in contact with someone who has tested positive for coronavirus. It's why we've introduced the COVID Safe app. With your privacy protected by law, COVID Safe keeps a secure note of other users you've been near if you have to go out. So if they test positive for coronavirus, you'll be notified. It'll help us stop the spread sooner so we can get back to the things we love. Download COVID Safe today. Authorised by the Chief Medical Officer, Canberra. As Australia moves to the NBN, now is the time to join an award-winning provider with service and performance that's out of this world. Turn to TPG. Get unlimited data with phone line for $59.99 a month. With more than 1.8 million broadband customers, our group is the second largest internet provider in Australia, connecting you to the internet. tpg.com.au HCF, Australia's largest not-for-profit health fund, has put the care of our members first for nearly 90 years. That's why we'll pay premiums for eligible members for up to six months if you're made redundant or stood down. HCF, that's uncommon care. If you'd like the sound of a brand new washer or dryer in your laundry, spend $600 or more on one at Bing Lee and get free full service delivery. You'll like the sound of that. Free full service delivery right now from Bing Lee. The diet we've chosen for you is the McDonald's diet. Is this real? Join a team of experts as they separate the nutrition from the nonsense. How to Lose Weight Well starts Monday 9.40 on SBS and On Demand. The Mermaid, tomorrow 9.35 on SBS World Movies and On Demand.
to the weather now in the major centres. Heavy rain is expected in Adelaide, Hobart, Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne. It's sunny in Perth, cloudy in Darwin and Brisbane. Looking further afield, fine for Wellington and Christchurch. Heavy rain in Samoa and Nandi. In Southeast Asia, thunderstorms for Bangkok and Singapore, showers for Honiara. Further north, there's warm in Hong Kong and Hanoi, fine days ahead for Tokyo. Heading west, a few showers in Baghdad and Beirut, cloud over Jerusalem. To Europe, cold and rainy conditions in Stockholm, while overcast in Athens and Berlin. In Africa, thunder and lightning will cause storms in Lagos and Addis Ababa. In South America, drizzle in Panama City and heavier downpours in Caracas and Bogota. And for North America, warm and fine conditions for LA and Dallas, humid but wet in Miami. Well, Istanbul's traditional string of lights for Ramadan is brightening up empty streets due to lockdown measures in place to slow the spread of COVID-19. Each year, the lights illuminate a religious message to welcome the beginning of the Islamic month of fasting. This year's message is focused on public health. It reads, life is at home, followed by welcome Ramadan. That's the world this Tuesday. The SBS News website has all the latest stories. Thanks for your company. From the team, good night. with the magic of music. The Seekers bid farewell to Australia. Mellow autumn sounds from star cellist Sheku. And a celebration with Celtic Woman. Out now at Classics Direct and all good music stores.